You guys, Tia's here. She is still working <laughs> at her boutique. So tell everybody who you are, what your name is, what your brand is, what you do, the origin story, all of that. All right, so we can start. My name is Tia Wilson. I am the owner and founder of Village Me Vintage Boutique. Um, let's start with the origin. I've always, 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 as long as I can remember, I think around middle school, I started getting into fashion, probably even before that. And um, by high school, I was just determined I was going to be a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. I, wanted, I wanted to sew everything. I wanted, I mean, hands on with everything. So in high school, I designed my prom dress as well. I got it made. I went down to the, the what is it, the district, the fabric district. Mm -hmm. I was able to um, just source fabric, got my fabric. And I mean, this is fresh out. I didn't know how to sew, but I was determined that I was going to at least design it and get someone to sew my ideas. You my ideas talking. are all fine. I'm sorry? You can keep talking. I'm going to go. Oh, so my, my ideas. I'm always, I'm always brainstorming and dreaming of design. So everything that I see in the stores, I never like. It's always something that I want to rearrange, whether it's take off a sleeve or add something, add some bling to it. I always got to change around anything that I buy. So it started with that. And then after, after designing my prom dress, I started feeling myself. I designed my sister's prom dress. I designed my cousin's prom dress. But the thing was, I never learned to sew mm -hmm. until I want to say about, what was it? Maybe 2013 or something. I enrolled finally at the Art Institute. Oh. I did a few semesters there where I learned the basics of sewing. I actually sewed my first dress there. Um, and then from there, I didn't graduate. I didn't finish because it's very costly to go to Art Institute. It's a privately owned school here. So everything with the fees are off. As a matter of fact, they're closed down right now. Mm. And I, anyway, I, I was able to learn the basics of sewing. Yeah. So Village Me Vintage started off from a girl with a dream, a girl with uh, that just always would wake up in the middle of the night dreaming of different ideas and designs. I would literally jot it down or draw it real quickly. And the next day when I woke up, I would actually make it more detailed so I don't forget my idea. Now, fast forward, Art Institute came. I learned the basics how to sew. I got a few garments under my belt. And then my daughter went to an art institute came when my daughter was actually about to graduate high school and go to college. Mm -hmm. So this is mommy now preparing is back to me. I'm trying to get back, you right. know, and get back into the things that I love doing before, you know, before I had to put, put myself to the back burner mm -hmm. and put her up front. So anyway, with that being said, um, Ever since then, and she started school, ever since she started college, the minute she started college, I just went full force boutique, but not actual brick and mortar. I decided to do online boutique with Village okay. Vintage, just to launch it in November of 2018, finally. But this is a long time coming. It's something I've always wanted to do. I just felt like it just almost seemed impossible. Not really impossible, but it was nowhere near in my near future that mm -hmm. I could see because of everything else that took priority and seniority over it. So yeah. that's how it started. Yay, <laughs> and she's doing such a great job. I remember when it came out, I was like, oh my God, I got to buy something. I don't know where I'm going, but I got to buy it. <laughs> and so I, I just- you were like my number one clientele girl. <laughs> it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Thank, um, you, thank you. So do you have, I know the answer, but just for context purposes, do you All still right. have a nine to five? And if so, how do you manage both? Girl, I have a <laughs> nine to five. And it's so fun. I have a nine to five. And when the devil knows that you are getting close to certain goals and, oh, I'm only going to use how keep my nine to five for a certain time. Mm -hmm. You have your timetable mapped out. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. So anyway, I have a nine to five. I do work for Suffolk Construction. Um, on the project management team for the last 15 years. We wow. do commercial, we do homes, uh, schools, some of everything. It's a really big company. It's originally um, the corporate, 
the main office, the corporate, uh, it started in Boston. Mm. And now we have, we actually have locations all over Boston, California, here in Florida, of course, Miami, Tampa, um, New York, mm -hmm. New York. So one of these days I might, no, because I'm actually getting out of construction. But yeah, <laughs> Right. Speak the, speak, it, speak the exit into existence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a nine to five. It's actually a seven to four because construction does start a lot earlier. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wear the hard hat, the, the boots, everything. And it's hard. And the more in love that I feel and I fall, like the whole, in, not only in love, just the whole aspect of being a business owner now, of the, 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 just the demand with the boutique, I love it so much more. And it's now causing a lot of friction, a lot. Mm. Like, I'm ready to just jump shit. Yeah. But Suffolk is mainly my main breadwinner here. Um, maybe I'm using it as a clutch. I don't know. I'm afraid to let go right now because I, especially with the quarantine too, this whole yeah. COVID, it's a lot of inconsistency and, and, you know, people aren't shopping as much. Um, thank God I've actually remained open and I'm doing, I'm keeping my doors open, mm -hmm. but it's hard. It's yeah. hard. Like, eventually I'm going to have to make a, a, a choice, a decision, and one is going to have to go. But right now I'm going to try to milk the two and get as much as I can out of it um, with future plans that I have coming up. I kind of need both in incomes, to be honest with you right now, mm -hmm. but it's hard. It's, you got, it, as long as you try to, um, I can't have too much of a social life. I have to do less socializing right now and i'm okay with making that sort of um sacrifice mm -hmm. because either it's either don't socialize you can socialize but then i won't sleep right. so that's where i'm at and it's i'm not a hundred percent happy and i'm really not a hundred percent myself with construction because of the boutique is pulling me more and i'm a lot yeah. more excited especially with all the demands and everything Suffolk is going to be to an end soon. I'm just really mm -hmm. trying to stand my ground and hold out, but it's too much. It's too much. And you can't really dedicate and put your all into something if you're being pulled in different Slip. places. Yep, I know. You're just going to half-ass everything, to be honest with you. Yep. My Suffolk work lack. is now a feat. To me, it's, I'm not, I shouldn't even be saying this on camera. We got to make sure we <laughs> post this. <laughs> <laughs> not for my job to see. Yeah. It's like, I'm slacking. Like, my work. Yeah, my, um, quality of work is diminishing, and it's because I'm just I'm I'm spread too thin. I am, mm -hmm. I am. Got you. Listen, yeah, folks, listen to the listen to what she's saying. But it's true. It's like okay, if you you have all these things going on, it, it, something is going to get neglected, right? Yeah. And what do you want? The, and because this is a dream that you have that has come true, we know that it's not going to be that, it right? So, no, um, I was going to say. So you talked about. So essentially, actually, let me go back. Do you see yourself like adding like a men's section to your boutique or do you see it just remaining for uh, the ladies? You know what? I have a lot of friends that have been, Taylor, when are you going to come up with a guy stuff? <laughs> a lot. And it's something I would be interested in, honestly. I'm not a person that likes to put myself in any type of limit. I feel I can do anything. You know, that's it. That's just me. Um, but eventually, I wouldn't mind. Not only men, I wouldn't mind. Um, I really, really, really want to get into, like, boys, little boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I just feel like the industry, every time you go to shop, you can find the cutest little things for girls. Mm -hmm. But for boys, it's like, they, they tripping. Like, they never you know, get the love. It's not cute stuff. And I would, I would like to do some cute little stylish, dapper-like clothes. Mm -hmm. you know? That type of style for boys, I wouldn't mind doing that. But men, definitely, I wouldn't mind expanding to um and doing men. But right now, I really want to just ex like I want to really embrace fully in the women and begin to like really. I I want to know it with my eyes closed, inside out, before I take on any other, you know, mm -hmm. any other style clothes clothing if I can't fully understand women and women's clothing and how it fit I'm already now learning the plus size how it works how you know what fits good on their bodies what you know what makes them feel good what what they like what's what's comfortable to them so I think men it would be the same sort of um 
learning experience Research, all over yeah. And I don't want to just take on more than I'm. You see, I have enough right now with the job. Maybe when I get rid of Suffolk, I uh -huh. can. Yeah, but that's eventually I wouldn't mind doing that. I would. That makes right. sense. Yeah. So we just got into fall. What are, what on your end are you seeing as some trends in like fashion and colors and what themes oh, yes. are there? Yes. Yeah, so definitely with the fall. Since the whole COVID thing, I noticed people are requesting a lot more cozy comfort sets, mm -hmm. um, biker sets, anything that's, they don't want anything too uh, tight and restricted. And, you know, they everyone wants comfort. And they also don't want a lot of uh, dressy because every, a lot of places are still closed. Well, mm -hmm. Florida, I don't know if in New York, uh, where are you, New York? New Jersey? Connecticut. Connecticut? Connecticut. I don't followed you and I was like, is she in New York? The first time when I started following you, weren't you in New Jersey or something? I was Jersey first. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So um oh wait, I got off track. What were we talking about? It's the trends. The okay, so the trends. So it's that everyone wants comfort posing. Yeah. A lot. So anything that's loose fitting that's just can stretch and move around with the body with ease, they love it. Mm -hmm. um they also the colors that i like for um fall mm -hmm. it's a lot of the mint the olives the um there's one that's called mauve i don't mm -hmm. know why they call it mauve because it looks more it's like a pink in between like a pink and a, and a purplish like a, like, yeah yeah but it's more like a, a, a not almost like how the mint is more like a pastel type mm -hmm. but it's more yep. toned down earthy colors they love that the beiges of course the whites are back and it was a myth no you can wear white after i remember that that day you know it was um it was that movie that did it um yes it was serial mom i think i think it was that movie one of those old 90s movie movies and the mother in the film who yeah who was a serial mom ended up killing someone because they were wearing like white after labor day or something. Oh, she, took a, she took a real serious <laughs> um at least, so that's how i remember it but i'm like okay that's not a thing anymore no not at all mm -mm. No. um what's what's one part of random question what's one part of entrepreneurship that you could do without <sighs> The fact that I can never, I can never just close and turn off my mind. <laughs> I am always, always, I can be out. I, I'm going to give you a prime example. I went to Jamaica like two weeks ago, just for, uh, just to wind down. I went with my parents, my boyfriend, my niece. And I kept saying, I'm not going to do any work. This is just going to be relaxation. I'm not even going to do any photos. Forget all of it. No, girl. I am always seeing scenery and this and that. On, this would be yeah. great content. This would be great content. Girl, I work the whole time. Like, and then it's how I sleep at night. I literally, I wake up. I'm in the middle of the night. I go to the bathroom. God forbid if I have to go to the bathroom once I come back. <laughs> I'm thinking of every single thing yeah. I need to do. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know the feeling. I can't shut it off. And it's it's also due to the fact that I feel like I need a larger team because I need help. Mm. I'm gonna have to source out help right now. So I I think of things that need to be done and I can't execute it fast enough. So that's one of the things why I never shut off my brain. It's just always something that I wanna accomplish. Yeah, to do. Yeah. I don't and know then, how to turn it off. I don't. Yeah. I, I don't I think you can at night <laughs> no nah, i just use the bathroom more yeah i don't think you can i've tried as well so like i just have i have notes like everywhere so whether it's in my phone or on the planner somewhere i have to write write things down so that i don't forget um and there will be times where it's like you know in the middle of the night and i'm like oh that's a great idea or you're watching something you get inspired by whatever like yeah there's always tabs open right um, in my brain um, some more business related questions, I guess, what give us like maybe two or three of the lessons that you learned going through the process, like as a new business owner, especially a brick and mortar, 
Yeah, I got some good ones. <laughs> um, I started off in the beginning. And of course, you know, any new business owner, you can't you can't pay for models, you can't pay, you can't pay for anything. You need help every area for a good I wanna say for it takes a good couple of years to start building your brand. So I had a bad habit of um I always try to like compensate people from like either giving them clothes. I just gave away a lot of stuff for free. And I realized that when you're starting out, you can't necessarily do it, even though you have to, because it helps and you have to give people some sort of incentive that they will want to come back to assist you. But I think I would have, I would have done less of that because if, instead of me seeing anything or any comeback or profit or anything, I felt like I took a, a harder hit in the beginning where I felt like I was doing so much work, but bringing in so little, I got so little rewards in, from, from it. And it's because I was giving out as fast as I was getting it. And it just wasn't a good business, mm -hmm. put a business thing to do at all. It put me back. But um, yeah, it set me back. I would do definitely do that differently. And I do not mix. Um, I don't really like to mix business with family and friends. I just, I try to keep it, you know, it's a lot easier to hire someone that is not your family because family will come with the excuses mm -hmm. or, oh, I didn't, I, I was running, you know, laid, just as all, they're a lot more laid back with you. You're, they already know, okay, the most you'll do is be mad for a minute, but we're family, you know? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mix business at all with, with family, very little. And I, Lastly, I probably wouldn't, um, I wouldn't obsess so much with the likes and with like the likes and the, the big social following media. on Instagram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would, I, I obsessed over that in the beginning to the point where I would literally call my family out and say, is, is something wrong with your fingers? You can't double tap? Like, come on, show me some love because people... In my mind, the whole social media honestly does work around hype. If you're, if they come to your page and they notice, oh my goodness, she is popping. She got this amount of followers, you know, hundreds of likes. This person has to be legit. If not, they kind of think, well, maybe this is not a legit business. Maybe it's some sort of, you know, bogus. And my family, I would try to tell them, y'all don't realize that that liking and that sharing, that's support and that's building and, and causing a ripple effect and the waves to start, you know, and people are, people notice things like that as shallow as it may sound, mm -hmm. people notice that. And that's what gets people to even notice you or for their attention to even turn to you. That's what I thought. So I would literally, I would get so, I would promise you, I would, I would have like anxiety over it and get really in my feelings about people not my friends not double tapping and supporting or sharing. I don't, you know, I took it, I took it to heart. Yeah. <laughs> so I oh, just, real, had, real talk. <laughs> I just had, um, so I recorded a video that I never posted. I recorded like maybe two weeks ago um, because September like 14th was like the sixth year that I was doing this or whatever. So that was one of my, the last point you brought up about, you know, the, the numbers, that was one of my, my lessons um, from just being in business, like it's not about the numbers, like just because people aren't liking it, just because people aren't um, commenting, just because, yep, it doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that, um, that you're not seen, right? It doesn't mean that your, your, your brand and your, your product isn't of quality. Don't look at the numbers. Cause I, even myself, I know sometimes that I'll be scrolling by something and I might comment, but I never like it. Or I might like it, but I'll keep scrolling depending on what mood I'm in. You know what I mean? Like, I may not feel like double. Right, right. As simple as right. it might be. Um, so I was like, you know what? It's not about the numbers because I might, it's not. It's I might not. go somewhere. And just when I think that nobody's listening to the podcast or nobody's reading the blogs and then someone will say, oh, my God, I, you know, do this. I don't have Instagram or I don't have this. Um, but I know, you know, I'm like, oh, well, that that you know helps and also the yeah. friend thing right because a lot of times I think we assume it goes both ways like we might assume that because we're friends with people they're 
supposed to support us or supposed to right and they're not right but the same that they shouldn't be expecting deals and coupons and and stuff from us um (laughs) because we have you know what i mean i was like so it kind of it goes both ways so yeah definitely don't look at the numbers it's it's likely that your your biggest supporters are people that you don't know right like no you're right you're and that's how it is for me you're and it, I, don't, I don't take it personally. It doesn't mean that my friends don't love me if they've never bought anything from me. Um, I know that they, there's different ways for them to show support. You know, they can share, they can put whatever in their stories, but whatever. It's not, it's not a personal thing at all. Yeah. So you mentioned that you went to Jamaica first. Actually, no. Yeah, you mentioned that you went to Jamaica. What are your... How was that experience of traveling? Because that was that the first time that you traveled since COVID happened, like abroad. It was, it so was. What was that like because you know a lot of people on the podcast listen to, well, most of the people who listen to the podcast are carnival junkies and travelers, and a lot of us haven't been overseas in a long time, right? Um, and are curious to know, like, what what was that like? Was it tedious? Was it easier than expected? Weird, like, did you, would you, were you, did you stay, like, in a hotel? You know, like, whatever you are willing to share. All right. Well, I went for the first time. Except I was actually supposed to go to Jamaica March 19th. That was the day after they closed everything. All right? So I missed the March 19th trip to Jamaica. And it was supposed to be, like, a whole couple thing. So it was, we were expecting to have a good time. Mm-hmm. But anyway, didn't go to that. Fast forward, COVID is here. September 2nd, September 3rd, I decided to go to Jamaica. All right. Leading up to Jamaica, of course, you know, you now have to, you can't enter Jamaica or you can't travel without a negative COVID test. All right. That you have to obtain no more than seven or they, they told me seven days. They didn't give me the 10 day one. It has to be no longer, no more than seven days. That's it. So Luckily, I have a um, co-worker whose family member owns an urgent care. The only thing is, this urgent care is pretty far from where I live. Um, but from where I work, it's closer. So my family, because I said, remember I said I want my mom mm-hmm. and my dad, my boyfriend and my niece, and they all went to this urgent care, which is about 45 minutes from, their, from our homes. And we drove to this urgent care just so we don't have to wait in line. Mm-hmm. It was just go in and out. So we did it. All right, we explained to the doctors that this is this test is a specific test to enter Jamaica. They're requesting for a PCR test, PCR COVID test. It's a COVID test, but they're looking for the term PCR. All right, <clears throat> I explained that to the doctor. He said, no, 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 we're familiar with it. We do, we do the COVID test all the time for travel. You're good. We did the test. I then had to take my results. And before we could fly, We had to upload those results onto some Jamaica national something Mm -hmm. type of site. I'll get it for you. Traveling site for Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once you enter it, you then have to wait for someone on their end to review your test, review how long you're planning on entering their country and staying for, as well as you have to, when you do travel, you have to stay in quarantine. Even if you, you're showing them a negative test, which I thought made no sense. You're making me get this test. You're allowing me to enter your country because the test shows that I am negative. But when I get to your country, I have to stay mm-hmm. in my hotel and not leave. Mm. All right. So that part was frustrating. It gets worse. Mm. After we submitted the paperwork, right? And mind you, this is three days before travel. All right, because the first set of paperwork I submitted six days before travel, I was declined to enter Jamaica. Uh Oh, I was declined, (laughs) not the uh oh, (laughs) (laughs) I was declined, girl. They declined me and said, stated that, um, your test results um, are not valid, it needs to be from an accredited and valid lab. So of course, when I took that to the doctor, he was highly offended. Like, what do you mean I'm not accredited? I am 
a doctor, this is my urgent care. It's not more. But see, he's like, all right, for shit's sake, I will send them. So he sent a copy of his uh, accreditation, I guess. Wow. That showed his 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 name, that he's a doctor, the yeah. name of his business, his practice, all of that. The doctor, and because it's like I said, it's my co-worker's family yeah. member, they're like going above and beyond mm -hmm. to do this. All right, so he sent me that, and he said, okay, so I don't know if this is legal or not, but this is, he, he basically said, I'm confused. Why are these people, why are they saying this is not a valid COVID test? There's no other test to take. This is the COVID test. Anyone that's in the medical profession reading this will know exactly what it is. He was like, are they having actual medical people review this or just administrative people? So that was a question. So fine, he manipulated it and just put, he added, not manipulated, he added the word um, PCR COVID test. They accepted mine. Mind you, he he, he did this, edit this for me, my, my boyfriend, my parents as well, okay? He fixed it. So I submitted my paperwork for myself and my boyfriend. I emailed my mom. She got her results with the revised paperwork. She submitted it. Why they approved me, declined my mother, declined my, same test, same test. So it was like, and this is the night their test results and them trying to, me trying to upload their test results was the night before our trip. Oh my goodness. Our flight is eight o'clock in the morning. I'm on the phone, I'm literally uploading things at one o'clock in the morning trying to re-upload and then talk to them, explaining, you approved me. I'm confused as to why you're not approving my parents, but let me go ahead and re-upload it again, maybe. And I'm I'm just trying to like play the game. And right. I'm letting you right. know, well, maybe you. I made a mistake. Maybe I forgot to include all attachments. Right. Here you go, playing that role. You know they came back and approved us three o'clock in the morning. Same effing paperwork. And First of all, I'm just glad that people were on on it around. It seems like they were actually people there to to exactly. help the customer service around the clock, which was good because on a normal day, you know, you'd be like waiting two weeks for somebody to get back to you, and you know, international yeah. and all that. So I, I, there's comfort there. <laughs> yeah, it is. So at that point, you know, we're like, okay, we didn't get no sleep, but it's fine. Oh, we're all going on. We're gonna have a good time. So. That worked out. That headache was over behind us. Get to the airport, smooth sailing. Miami International was very organized. It was literally fast. Actually, I was quite shocked, quite mm -hmm. impressed. Literally, no, but it could have been the time I was traveling. It was early morning. Our flight was at 8. I think we got there at 6 a.m. So, by yeah. the way, that's not a, 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 real, a real good judgment on, yeah. you know, because of the time I went. But that's fine. Well, what I experienced, it was smooth, it was quick, it was very organized. Um, it was just like any other flight, to be honest with you. And I love the fact that we flew on JetBlue and all the middle seats, no one, it was empty. So you had a person, you yeah. had no one between you. So they, they kind of like spread you out that way. Mm -hmm. um, it was perfect, smooth flight. We got down to Jamaica. I have never seen such organization. Mm. And people would think because it's like, a third world country or you know someplace no they were on top of it they were so covid like took precautions in every area okay they had hand sanitizing stations everywhere um matter of fact when you got off the plane they took you to you know how i don't know if you ever flew into montego bay but when you normally get off you go down this little ramp and then you kind of go to where the whole um, immigration part is. Mm -hmm. And it's usually wild, chaotic, and lots of lines. No. They literally had six, I want to say by four by four tables. Yeah. Uh, four feet tables. Yeah. Um, with two seats, two on the other side. With, I, and it had to be at least 30 stations like that. So you're in a line and it's going quickly because it's a lot of stations set up. They, before you go sit down, they spray the staff after everyone gets up. They spray the station down, they wipe it down, then they call the next person. But because mm -hmm. it's like 30 tables, it's going fast. Yeah. You're not right. waiting in line long. They sit down there, they sit you down, they ask you a series of questions. How do you feel? 
They take your temperature. Mm. They do. Um, they go over your paperwork. They want to know where, exactly where you're going. And then once you leave that location, you get your bags. And once you get your once you get your bags, um, I'm lying. Be right before you get your bags, you have to then check into another station. Mm. Guess that part that check-in does. They take your phone from you and they download an app on your phone. Oh. That app <laughs> required daily. When you get notified, you have to respond to the notification on that app with a video. A video. They want to see where you're at when you're taking this video, girl. With a Are video. You serious? Girl, <laughs> they want to make sure you are not on their beach on their beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow yeah so they they make you take a video and you can only upload a video when they request it i learned that the hard way i was trying to be slick you know mm -hmm. yeah. so anyway um yeah you have to state your name you have to also state how do you feel do you have any symptoms or anything and then you just sit submit now on the app it's a tracking app they can see where you're at so if you put in the location that, like, for instance, we stayed at my parents own an uh, Airbnb in the grill. It's called Car Cartagena, as mommy would say, Aqueducts. So we stayed at this two-bedroom, two-bath Airbnb, and everyone else, they did not put the, the app on their phone. Only me. The person right. who used their phone the most, me. Y'all want to try to restrict me with my phone? Come on now. Yeah, so they put it on my phone. They didn't put it on my boyfriend's phone. And I think the guy probably did that kind of like looking out because he knew we were going on vacation he knew because my first question is okay so when we can't leave the hotel how do we get food the lady looked at me and said do you have someone that can bring it for you girl i don't know nobody here no y'all got uber i don't know what you're saying to me like <laughs> but it was one of those so anyway the app was on my phone, it was not on anyone else's phone. That's the one thing I noticed that they did. And then every, the first two days I was there, I got notification as far, you know, and I uploaded first, first day, I should say the day after that was it. After that, I tried to check in myself, say, okay, you know, what? I'm going to wake up. I'm going to check in, let them know I'm good. And then I'm out. Girl, I thought that that was the best way to do it. Honey. When I went to try to upload my video and be, you know, all on time and on point and beat them to it, <laughs> get a notification that says we did not ask you to upload anything at this time. When you are, when we request for you to submit your, <laughs> so I'm there trying to use. We to the West Indian ass. I can't. I was there really? trying to use my. I ask you for. I ask you for information. Oh, so why are you sending <laughs> this? <to> me? <laughs> I asked yes. yes, I, I come to you. <laughs> Girl. Too I'm fast. Like, this app is well bright and fancy. <laughs> Girl, or well, whatever. So mommy's like oh making a Girl, I would do like Medea and put that phone and tie it around the cat neck and have the cat run up all in her all around the apartment, the, the Airbnb, and let's go. <laughs> oh this is intense oh my god okay, well, that that's what traveling abroad was but don't get me wrong even with that it was worth it i bet yeah it was so worth it and honest to god after that first day when i submitted what they requested they never hit me back up mm -hmm. but i will say everywhere that we went they knew we were american and they they acted like we were had the plague like girl Worse than if they heard Miami? Oh my god! <laughs> you know I came from Fort Lauderdale, and we're like high in in cases. They treated. They were like, dude, I got a COVID test. When did you get a COVID test? I guarantee you did not. But they look at you like, no, you got that shit. Oh yeah. my goodness! They do. They do. Oof. But it was cool. I mean, we. We, the first day, like I said, they, we, I submitted the video. Nobody harassed me after that. We went to the beach. We went all over. And on the beach, you saw lots of Americans. But the thing is, if you have a hotel on the beach, you are allowed to utilize the beach. My Airbnb is like four minutes, three minutes from the beach. So mm. that, that was why I could have gotten in trouble. And mm. they will find you. They will find you up to a million dollars Jamaican dollars. They can. So it's, 
it's a risk I probably take again. No, it me up. I think it's more to scare you. I don't know. It, it just seems yeah. like to scare you, and, but it's working but, over here because I'm like, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm good. I'll just I'll wait good. a little bit. <laughs> you know, you know, I feel like I'm through all that. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, man. Uh, so, but I had a good time, and it was that's good. Needed. It was needed. Good. Really good. Um, let's go, Shaw. Let's go. I'm going somewhere. I don't know. I don't know where my first international trip is. I'm working on it. I'm trying to figure something out before my birthday. Mm -hmm. Um, but I am doing like local stuff, but it's like local. I'm getting on my first plane next this coming week. Oh, um, but oh yeah, well, I'll be oh I'm gonna come to the store. Not this week. Um, we'll get we'll, offline. I can't be telling everybody my business. Yeah, but, don't yeah, girl. I'll be. I'm coming to the store. Real. Um, <laughs> oh my god, are you really? Um, you got me excited. Stop mm -hmm. playing. I'm coming to the shop. Okay. I totally forgot about that. So yeah, I'm taking like these like mini staycations within the within the nation, mm -hmm. um, and then, um, you know, once I do these local domestic um, plane experiences, then I'll I'll experiment with going abroad. Um, so we're gonna switch into um, island gear for a second, and we're gonna do the okay. we're gonna do the this or that little mini game. Um, oh, wow. But tell everyone about your Caribbean roots, if any. Okay. I do have Caribbean. I'm a, I'm a mutt, real bad. <laughs> I'm a Caribbean mutt, okay? All right. Well, I was born in Brooklyn. I was raised in Miami from like maybe 12. Mm -hmm. I came here in Miami and now I live in Fort Lauderdale. But my parents, my mom is from Guyana. Mm -hmm. However, she grew up in Brooklyn from she was six years old. We went to the same, same elementary school in Brooklyn. Oh, that's yeah. cute. PS 181, what's up? <laughs> yeah. We sure did. We went to the same elementary in Brooklyn. And um, my father, well, my biological father is Trinidadian. Mm -hmm. I don't know him. I must mm -hmm. have met him once He in New York. Mm -hmm. um, however, when the family moved when I was young and we came to Florida, I... I lost complete contact. My family members lost contact. I never really knew him. Mm -hmm. um, so he's Trinidadian. And my stepfather, who I did grow with, right. he's Jamaican. And that's okay. how I actually ended up living in Jamaica. I went to high school for two years in Jamaica. So, yeah, I'm a mutt. I'm a mutt. Okay, because that, that helps. Because I'm like, I feel like I don't want to say anything wrong because I feel like I've seen her with multiple flags and I can't... Sure. But I can't, yeah. I can't well, say you know, I really different. only rep, that's so bad. I rep only, really only, you know what? Guyana. That's it. Mm -hmm. I, I, but I do big up Jamaica on Jamaica. You do place. all the time. I do, I do. <laughs> but I, the bad part is everybody tells me, but Tia, you're still technically Trinidadian. You need to rep that still part of you. I don't know. I guess because I didn't grow with him. I don't know. But mm -hmm. I rep Guyana harder than it, than yeah, Guyana and Jamaica, I was saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see that. Bad. <laughs> but now I'm I'm kind of like feeling into my, my Trinidadian side a lot more. Since I've been with my boyfriend, he's very, he's Trini. And he, mm -hmm. if we can go on a vacation every, 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 every month, he would only pick Trinidad. I promise you, I'm not joking. <laughs> you can say, let's go to Tulum, let's go to Bali, let's go, you know, no. Let's go to Trinidad. <laughs> <laughs> no place like home. <laughs> it's so true. I'm more into it though. I am. I am. Love okay. Trinidad. I always have friends in Trinidad, but for some reason, I don't know. I just never really relate to that part as far as as that it's my it's part of me. I don't know. It's, I don't know because I don't know much about. I can't say I don't know much about it. I'm learn. I, I know a lot more now, but because I didn't actually grow. Yeah, I understand. Not you know. Yeah. Same way. I, my, my mother's from Turks and Caicos. That's where I was born in Boston. They shipped me over there. She shipped me over there like six uh -huh. months or so. And I stayed over there for a little bit. And But my father's from Tortola. And I've never been. I actually have to get there. So I'm yes. just oh, listen, My cousin lives over mm -hmm. there. I'm dying. To, she just, as a matter of fact, today, she was like, y'all need to come to Virgin <laughs> So I need to get. I was like, so I don't rep. I was like, because I don't know about it, and then I am bad because yes, I could take the time to sit down and learn things, but it's not the same as 
growing and, somewhere and growing yeah and growing up there like you can ask me stuff about grand turk and Texas, go, i got you but i can't tell you anything so i'm not gonna sit up here and rep this flag like i know it for real for real um so i do right. know how to cook the food though i've always i got that <laughs> into trinidadian food i do know how to cook the food girl i could make, make a mean dollar right when i tell you what you can tell me I'm not born red, red everything in <laughs> Trini. But yeah, I'm like you. I don't know much mm. about other than Carnival. Right, right, right. All right. right so there. let's talk about that a little bit. So we're going to play this or that. I want to ask right. four questions. Well, four little um, nuggets. All right. So first, since we talked about Jamaica a little bit, this or that, reggae or dance hall? When, okay, clarify when what's the difference? Is, so well, I know the, dance hall, but reggae like as far as who? What type of music? Like, like reggae, I'm talking Barris and okay. okay. Um, mm-hmm. I'm reggae. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a moody person because I get in the mood for dance hall. I, I don't try to get on my head top before. Okay, oh that's how much I love dance hall. But um, my regular, the most go to, I will be reggae. Anyway. Okay. Okay. I like a more mellow, kickback, iry, you know, <laughs> chill type setting. I do. Got you. I think, um, and I, I think I'm more dance hall. Yeah. Really? Um, it takes, I would have to be in a certain zone for reggae. Like, I don't always want to listen to it because, mm-hmm. yeah, I think I'm, I love it, but mm-hmm. I, I always gravitate towards dance hall more than Really? And, See, and I have I have um uncles that are like Rasta Rasta. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why I gravitate to um reggae mm-hmm. more. It's more conscious, more relaxed. Not the jump up hype up. But I get in the mood for both, bro. I've mm-hmm. always been into my lady song. Yeah, yes. Mm-hmm. I love my dance hall. Ooh. I do. A ratchet. I ratchet. That was a big thing. Okay. This or that. Uh-huh. We'll step into fashion a little bit. Fall or summer? Summer. Why? I don't like clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to feel. I just like to be comfortable. I do. And the older I get, I don't want all that stuff on me. Oh. Have you? Have, well, you have gone shopping in the winter time in New York. I would always go visit my family, and. By the time I come out of the mall with the coat and the sweater and the, the, the layers, my shoulders, everything hurt. My feet hurt. My feet are tired of being closed. Summer, honey. All day. Mm-hmm. Okay. We need some flip-flops. We're good. It's true. Mm-hmm. There's only, yeah, there's more things I like about summer than I do um, fall. I think fall is just fall fashion, but I don't really want to sit in it like I could just just take a couple pictures right and then that'd be it but for summer yeah I don't I think I'm true to like my island self like I if I could walk barefoot all day outside I would like I don't like shoes I don't like sneakers so I got stabbed because I'm like dang I gotta put these chucks on I don't really want to um so yeah I love a flip-flop I don't like clothes either um and what was the other thing I was about to share I think the only thing that traumatized me this summer was the ex- wow. my eczema flare-up, mm-hmm. which was due to the heat. Is there so the worst in the summer? It's, it's extreme temperature. So it's either extreme heat or extreme cold. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. That's, yeah. So, yeah, summer is not okay. Mm-hmm. The summer oh. was, was sucked. So, but other than that, I think, yeah, I'm definitely a, a summer person. Get to go outside and be one with nature. And, and, and I'm very outdoorsy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. I'm an outdoors person, especially um anything on the water, especially. Yeah, I'm not too woodsy because I, I really don't like wildlife critters. Mm-hmm. You know? But if I can be high up in the mountains type woodsy, I'm yeah, okay. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Less <laughs> jungle. Or if the jungle is an organized jungle where I have room to walk and there's room, you know, <laughs> I don't want to be boxed in with. All kinds of wildlife. I'm I'm afraid of wildlife. I am. <laughs> Organized jungle. Okay, we'll just don't go. Don't let's not do that. Um, <laughs> but I've right. always wanted to go camping. Oh, that's okay. on my fall list. 
I want to to go back. It's fun. Always wanted to. I've never done it. My mom and my family used to do it all the time when in New York. Mm-hmm. But I've never experienced it. Ever. It's a good time. I got a one time. Those. Girl Scouts. Hey, Troop 9410 over here. Girl, I don't remember all of that, but it was a girl. I was a Girl Scout for a very short time. <laughs> Mine was long. But anyway, okay. Um, okay, back to carnival life. Mm-hmm. Front line or back line? You know what? I like front line. No, I'm lying. I don't like all that crap. I want to be free. I want to jump up. I don't want to be restricted. That I'm going to lose the backpack. I'm not, I'm not going to lose it. I'm just going to leave it. Leave it at the hotel. I, I don't like all the extra fuss. I don't. But I do like, I would not mind doing it like the next time they open up, I think I would want to do it. Just to, because I know it probably, I'm, I'm winding down from carnival. Right. Playing mass. So now that I'm winding down, I, I feel like I want to go all out for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. I go out you. with a bang, I guess. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but I would, on to jump up and enjoy, no, I don't, I don't want all that front line. It's cute for pictures. Other than that, you can't really enjoy, enjoy. It's very it's true. Carnival. You got to think. Darn back everything the wheel. I ain't able with all that. I just want to go. Well, that's queen with the wheel. But um, I just want to go and enjoy it and not stab somebody with my damn extra stuff. Or be stabbed. Them. Yes, exactly. There was um 2017 in JA with um Peeny Wally. I thought my costume came with feathers or whatever, but it didn't. Mm-hmm. And at first I was bummed, but then by the end of the day, I was like, this was the best road experience. No. You okay. see that though? I don't I don't like that. And that is what disappoints me with Wait, carnival what? nowadays. I don't like the fact that they just give you the bikini. You still oh, no, I no no, I didn't make the selection. There were wings. Right. I thought I got the costume that had the wings with it. No, but, but that's what I'm saying. I oh, think you're saying that now, it should be like standard period. The basic costume, mm. you have to buy like you don't get wings, you don't get not one feather. No, I don't agree with that at all. I do not like that. I think that is wrong. Because carnival is about feathers. Mm-hmm. It's about something. A headpiece, feathers on your foot. You can't have carnival without feathers. Some kind of feathers. Like, I just feel like I'm being robbed. Ooh. And then they're hella expensive. But yet still wear my feathers. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's like, mm-hmm. I didn't want a bikini alone. I wear. I can wear a bikini. I can do. I want some feathers. Head arm piece something. Put something give me some feathers something but i don't need a big old backpack small right. little collar but i need feathers yeah something i never did it completely naked like that so you experienced that i've d- yeah and i lo- and i loved did i have did i have the little thing yeah no i didn't have any feathers at all but it right. worked out um i think like yeah i would have probably it's just for it's just for for photos, but at, even mm-hmm. with the collar, sometimes it's like I can't even see in my peripheral because the little <laughs> collar is there. It's just it is it's <laughs> and annoying, um, but it doesn't mean I don't want it to bring back home and do stuff with. But I think you know people have the right idea when they leave it at the hotel or or what have you. Yeah. But it's blessing and a curse, essentially. You know. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. As far as. Okay, as far as fets go, and I, I think I'm going to keep this question consistent with each. All right. So, cooler fet or all inclusive? I'm going to be real honest. For some reason, because my hand pouring liquor <laughs> at cooler fet, they usually roll me out on the cooler. Like, I'm done. Like, <laughs> but I always have the most fun at a cool event for mm-hmm. some reason i think but i love a good all-inclusive but i think cool effect for me yeah I, I i get my money's worth with a cool effect. of course i enjoy enjoy yeah. yes okay same here um i never used to care for i only used to really go to all-inclusives for the food because back in the day i didn't i didn't really <laughs> drink like that or whatever i drank 
it was very selective. And so oh if it wasn't a cooler fat or if it wasn't, if the bar didn't have certain things that I really wouldn't like drink it. I wasn't like a Henny or, a, you know, a Johnny Walker person. It was just like, no, I want coconut rum, pineapple juice, you know, that type of drink that's not going to make me fall on my ass. Um, so I love, like, I love cooler fats because I could just bring what I want, put some snacks in there as well. And you have to worry about anything. But for right. all inclusives, it's like, all right, if I'm going to do this all-inclusive, I need to get there when it opens so that yeah. I can get access to all the food, don't have to wait in line, get my pictures before everybody else comes. Because, you know, usually they're um, you know, kind of like upscale um, yeah. parties or whatever. So you're like yeah. dressed to impress and all that. So, yeah, there's a time and a place for all-inclusive, but you can never go wrong with, with the coolest. You <laughs> have the most fun and coolest. Yeah. And plus, you you pouring, you gauging it yourself. Your, yourself. <laughs> and you don't have to go to the bar. You don't have to go to the bar. No. That's why I'm always drunk. That's why I always get, listen, waste. One time, i never forget. I literally, I was with my, a friend of mine, and walking out of the food at the end of the night, I was gone. And I literally, in the most poised, ladylike manner, there's a garbage can right at the gate. Was <laughs> I was like, and throwing up in the garbage. <laughs> and then as a joke, since I've worked construction, when I get like that, what we all do, I'll go in my trunk and get my hard hat. And it's like a joke ride at home with a hard hat. That's how wasted I was. You had to oh, get gosh. hard hat driving home. <laughs> Aww, yeah. Cool effect. All right, girly. We have come to the end of our conversation. You want to, it was, can you share with the listeners uh, where they can find you on social media, where your shop is, the brick and mortar, online, all that jazz? Yes. So once again, my name is Tia with Village Me Vintage Boutique. I am located in Coral Springs, Florida. We, I do have a brick and mortar as well as online. You can come to the brick and mortar at 7522. Wilds Road, and it's Suite 101B in Coral Springs. Um, this is also a suite that has everything that you, it's a one-stop shop. So if you want your nails done, hair done, wig done, lashes done, we do it all. Teeth whiten, we do it all here. So you can come visit us, come visit me at the boutique, or feel free to go online at, at villagemevintage.com. Uh, online, or you can follow me on Instagram at Village Me Vintage, as well as Facebook at Village Me Vintage. And you're able to shop on Instagram, Facebook, or on the website, or here at the store. But definitely um, support your girl. I am, I'm here for you, and I do answer any styling advice, any styling questions that you have. If you need me to style you for a particular event, I also offer that service as well. Um, yeah. Vintage.com. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. For Shameless plugs. Me. I love it. Great job. That was good. I can just wrap <laughs> all that in there. Um, and and Ting's Nice is going to have jewelry there as well. So that's yes, she for yes, she working in the background right here. All right. Let's do it, girl. Let's do it. Okay. And we're going to sidebar and I'm going to tell you about where I'm going. Okay. Okay. Cool. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Shar. <laughs>